Okay, here's the bust and the base uh, once I've primered everything. The first step, of course, is I'm going to paint the base. So I'm going to use a darker gray than the primer. Uh, I thought about using black, but I thought that might be a little too contrasty. So I'm going to use black and some white and mix up a gray. And uh, I'm going to airbrush that onto the base. So here's the paint once it's been mixed. It's simply the paint with some water added, and I use a brush to stir to make sure that all the paint, the pigment, so forth, is thoroughly mixed with the water. And if you notice, when I touch the brush to the side, it runs down rather quickly. And that's, that's my test for when it's the right viscosity for spraying. Now, I'm going to be using my trusty Badger Anthem. I love this airbrush. I know it's a siphon feed. It's not a gravity feed that a lot of people prefer to use, but uh, I really like this airbrush. I've been using it for years. I take very good care of it, and uh, I, I get a lot of uh, good use out of it. Uh, as long as you keep them clean, you really shouldn't have any major problems with spraying. Heck, I can even do fine pencil lines with this thing. So here I'm going to begin spraying and you just want to give everything a nice even coat. Get into all the nooks and crannies, all the crevices. And again, this is a darker shade than the primer. So it's, it's somewhat easy to tell uh, once you have it all covered. And again, you may wish to use a different color. You may wish to make your rock brown or a brownish gray. And of course, with acrylics, you can speed dry the paint, which makes waiting much easier. <laughs> speed up that drying time so you can go right on to the next step. Okay, so here the base has been completely base coated with that darker gray. The next phase will be to dry brush using lighter shades, which will bring out all of that texture. Now normally, after this step, I would use a flat. I'm not going to use any sort of clear coat just yet. The first phase will be to do all the dry brushing to bring out the texture. What do you think of this fancy palette? Now I'm going to apply some what I call earthen tones onto the palette and those do include black as well as white. Sometimes I'll throw a little bit of green on there, a little bit of brown, orange, because when those colors mix you can end up with earthen tones. Whenever I do this, this step always reminds me of an artist painting a picture your palette really isn't any different than that. You are applying different shades of color and you're also mixing right on the palette so that all the colors combine to create different shades, different tones. And that's important because when you're painting earthen or organic things like rocks and earth and grass and trees and things like that, you want all those colors to sort of intermingle and mix. And you want to use a brush that's sort of like a powder puff. Uh, a very, very soft, pliable brush. A brush like this. Something that's really soft so that all you're basically doing is applying enough paint to the brush and you're picking a color, so you're, you're doing a little bit of mixing and you're going to take well, you know, once you have your colors applied to the brush, you simply remove the excess paint that's on the brush onto a paper towel. And of course, as you scrub on the paper towel, you'll even begin to see how that dry brushing works. And with just a little bit of paint on that brush, you're then going to stroke against the texture or against the grain of all the details and what happens, of course, is the lighter shades 
end up basically on the outermost surfaces, all along the edges. As you can see here, as I'm brushing that lighter tone onto that darker tone, you see the color just begin to pop. All of that texture begins to come out. I can't emphasize this enough, and I know I'm like a broken record on all my videos, but dry brushing to me is extremely important to really bring out all the detail. Sculptors spend a great deal of time putting all of this texture into a model, and you really want to be able to see all of that texture, all of that detail. And by using the various tones and shades, you can really bring that out. And remember, less is sometimes more. You never want to apply a heavy coat with a, of, of dry brushing because it'll start to look like cake frosting on there. You just want to do a little bit at a time, gradually building that color. Of course, you can always come back with the base color in your airbrush and mist over it if you need to fade it back some. I just feel that dry brushing is extremely important. I still see a lot of modelers who insist on using an airbrush in place of dry brushing, and frankly, I don't see how you can achieve the same effect. You want to be able to see all of that texture, all of those details just pop. And using an airbrush to apply various shades is not really doing that. It's one thing if you have a smooth subject like skin tones. But when it comes to applying uh, or, be, or being able to see all kinds of texture, you want to be able to dry brush. Just look at the details. All of that stone texture is being brought out with that little bit of dry brushing. And if you look here on the back, which I haven't even touched yet, you can tell it's just a solid color gray. Very hard to see all the detail. But look here across the other side. There you're beginning to see the details because it, can, it has that dry brushing. No dry brushing again on this side. And then here with the dry brushing. It's like night and day. That's why I think dry brushing is so important. The next phase was to paint the little embossed trees. Uh, there's four of them along the base, two, on I, uh, two, two or three on either side. I think it was two on one side and uh, two in the middle on the other side. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, and all I did was I started with a brown for the trunks, and then I dry brushed those, and I simply dry brushed the leaves, a light green. And here the base is uh, completely finished, and it's ready for a, a coat of sealer or dull coat. Now next up, of course, was the bust itself. Now I decided I was going to use a rather medium flesh tone. I was going to mix that. It was going to be a custom mix for this particular model. All my flesh tones vary anyway. I never like to use the same shade. So for this, I decided to use these colors here, white, coral, brown, yellow, and just a little bit of orange. And the colors are laid out here according to the amount. And again, this was all airbrushed using the trusty Badger Anthem. I just had the air pressure set, I believe, at about 15 PSI. The paint was mixed rather thin, and I just started building the color up using, uh, using the airbrush to get plenty of color all in the little nooks and crannies, turning the bust, getting around the eyes, into the eye sockets, all the way past the hairline. You just want that base coat to cover nice and even all over the bust. And there it is with the base coat all airbrushed on. 
And at this point, again, I did not use any dull coat. I'm waiting until I have the other colors applied. So the next phase was going to be somewhat of a shadow color, but not a very dark color. So I, I started with the base flesh tone and adding a little bit of that to the cup. I wanted to try to maintain the same tone, the, to the same tonal value. But here I added a little bit of red to, because I wanted a kind of a pinkish hue. I also wanted it somewhat transparent. So I decided to use some Folk Art Extender. If you guys have never used this stuff, I highly recommend it. It helps keep the paint from drying in the airbrush, and it also adds a little bit of transparency to the paint. Allows you much greater control when you're applying the color. And here I've added the pinkish areas uh, in between the, the folds of the arms, all the little nooks and crannies all over the bust. Very light, as a matter of fact. Now I'm going to come back with a darker shadow color. And again, starting with the base flesh tone, I'm going to add some of that to the cup. Then I'm going to add some brown and a few drops of true red. Now I'm using some pastel chalks. I want to be able to go into the smaller areas, the areas around the mouth, the laugh lines. In some of the, uh, some of the folds, some of the wrinkles around the eyes, on the forehead. These can be rather difficult to try and airbrush, although I did airbrush some of them. I'm just simply trying to concentrate the color and to get it a little bit darker and into those smaller crevices. Trying to emphasize the shadows. The face is so dynamic with all of the, the nooks and crannies, the, the folds, the, the uh, wrinkles in the face, that it just cries out for more detailing. Now here the bust has been coated with a flat. Now I've mixed up a dark brown as the the base color for the hair, and I'm cutting that in with a small brush right up to the right up to the face where the hair meets the face. And it, in actuality, this brush was a little bit frayed, and I use brushes like that when I'm painting hair so that the ends are somewhat frayed against the face. Once those areas are done, I came back with a wider brush to finish off the larger areas of the hair across the top and the back and the sides. Now I'm using another brush and I'm using a dry brush technique but I'm actually using a darker color just hitting the surfaces. The hair is rather fine and then I did come back with the airbrush and a thin down brown to fill in those areas and to soften the edges where the hair meets the skin. Now here I've painted the eyes and the teeth. I painted the mouth a kind of a burgundy color. And then I also highlighted the hair with gray. Now I'm going to gloss up the eyes and the mouth. And I always use five minute epoxy on quarter scale and larger. The five minute epoxy really gives everything a high gloss finish. Really does make the eyes sparkle quite a bit. Just mix the epoxy in equal amounts. I do sometimes use a small brush and I buy packs of these at Walmart over in the artist supply area. A pack of 30 is something like $1.98. And these are great because you, you need to be able to use disposable brushes. And here's the eyes and the mouth all glossed over with the epoxy. And here's the finished model. This model was a lot of fun to paint. Great sculpt, very dynamic. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is Phil Lister saying, Go build a model.